and just a little bit. So I titled my talk, Early Season Plant Bug Fieldwork in SoCal, and SoCal stands for Southern California. Okay, wait, I'm, maybe, should I record it? Or... I'm already recording it. <laughs> okay, cool, thank you. Okay, so with that, um, I think most people probably around the globe have a rough idea of where California is located. It's on the west coast of North America. And what I'm showing here is specifically a map of the so-called California floristic province, which is a global biodiversity hotspot that is characterized by Mediterranean type climate. And it extends all the way from Oregon and into Mexico, into the northern part of uh, Baja California. And when you look at it closely too, it's really only the colored in parts here that are part of that, um, uh, California, uh, that floristic province. But California is actually a little bit broader. So those areas are mostly desert areas that aren't really strictly speaking part of the floristic province, but because they're close to where we are, we include them pretty much in any field work we're doing. So what makes it a global biodiversity hotspot are really two things. And one thing is there's lots of species here, like for example, plants, 7,000 species, subspecies, and varieties of vascular plants. And then the second important point is about 30% of them are endemic to the province. And that also includes a whole bunch of really unique uh, plant communities, uh, including, for example, chaparral, coastal sage scrub, pinion, juniper woodland, you name it. There's a whole bunch of them. But then there's another third really important point that makes it a global biodiversity hotspot. And I think that is shown really quite nicely on a photo I took a, during a field trip a couple of weeks ago. Uh, snow-capped mountains in the background, Lake Elsinore in the foreground, and then you see a lot of developments. And it's really that encroachment into natural Christian, I think we lost her. You I lost think... me? Yeah, yeah. For how long? Oh, just a couple seconds when you're talking okay. about development encroaching. Okay. So I think that's pretty obvious from that photo that there's a lot of human development happening in the area, which threatens the biodiversity around us. And what makes it worse is that the insect diversity in the California floristic province is still really quite poorly documented. We don't actually even know how many described species of insects we have around here, which is ridiculous. Okay, then I think my second slide, merely probably don't need much introduction. They're a huge group, mega diverse insect family, ranks among the 20 most species rich families of insects, which is why we love them. Uh, there are seven subfamilies, about 35 tribes, and more than 1,500 genera. And that I want to say is a number that's outdated by about 10 years. But the taxonomic community on Meridi has actually been really active. So there were about more than 300 taxonomic publications that have actually come out during the past decade. So there's a lot of active work happening on a group around the globe. One of the things though that you observe when you look at the literature on Meridi, there really aren't that many solid hypotheses on evolutionary relationships of plant bugs. And the ones that are out there only include about 12% of described species, which isn't terrible, but it's not fantastic either. And that's been bugging me for a while because there's that wealth of spatial, meaning specimen records, locality data, and host plant data, but we're really missing the phylogenies to use them to better understand the historical biogeography, but also the host evolution of plant books. So getting back to the California floristic province, there are about 700 described species recorded from the California floristic province. That's between the plant bug, electronic plant bug catalog and our specimen database really. About 30% of them are endemic to the California uh, floristic province. So very similar to plants. And when you look at uh, the Arthropod Easy Capture database, ACA PBI database, in which we've recorded a lot of specimen data over the last 15, 17 years, a little longer, actually 20 years now. 
there's about 25,000 georeference occurrence records in that database. And when you print a map of only those species endemic to California, as Sarah did here, you see there's a lot of green dots all over Southern California. So it looks pretty well collected in a way. So you may ask then, why more field work in a California Florida province now? And the simple answer to that is that because we were annoyed by the lack of phylogenies that would allow us to look into the historical biogeography as well as host diet evolution of this group of insects, we decided to write an NSF grant and we were funded last year and a grant officially started last year in October, so October 2023. When I'm saying we, it's three PIs, uh, myself, Michael Fortman as a co-PI and Jason Bond and UC Davis as a co-PI. We do, as you can see, an open postdoc slot. Uh, we just received all our applications, I think, and we'll start reviewing applicants over the next few days. And then we do have three grad students, uh, Sarah Schroeder, Veronica Tutz are already in place, and we recruited a third grad student, Matthew Fox, who's going to be starting over the summer. And then further here in California, we have Rochelle, some of you met her at uh, meetings, and uh, she's really our specialist when it comes to um, kind of doing complicated library prep. Uh, and making sure all the molecular stuff is really under control, as well as three fabulous undergrad students, Grady, Alejandra, and Caitlin, who've been helping with sorting out a lot of merit specimens over the last few months. Okay, and of course, this is not all. Those are only the people in California. So there's a really long list of collaborators from around the world who we've managed to sort of rope into helping us with various aspects of the grant, including providing specimens, Thank you to all of you out there who have already sent us specimens. If you haven't, I am probably in the process of sending an email and coming after you, sending you little bundles of ethanol um, vials so you can put specimens in there. And um, also I want to point out, Toby has been extremely um, helpful in um, helping us to navigate um, what is now in progress, which is uh, transitioning the electronic catalog of plant bugs to a new platform that's called TaxonWorks. So lots of progress um, in this area, really. So what is this project all about? Uh, we're building an overarching phylogeny of um, MIRID, really. We're sorting ethanol samples from around the world at the moment, incorporating the material we've already received from collaborators. And the goal is really to sequence um, a pretty insane number of uh, different taxa, so about uh, 930 in-groups or so for that overarching phylogeny. Uh, we now have pretty good protocols established for dry and ethanol specimen um, extractions, library prep, and then we're doing low coverage genome sequencing, uh, genome assembly, and UCE retrieval, which is something that Veronica and Michael have been spearheading over the last couple of months. So right now we have about uh, 400 representatives, uh, four representatives of about 400 genera in the pipeline, and the numbers are pretty much going up every day. Lots to do. Uh, the second project is much more focused on California. So specifically, we're really interested in finding out where do the different clades in California come from. And we decided to focus on 12 sample clades um, and subdivided into three subproject one that includes species that are found across the whole Arctic, uh, one group of uh, clades that are only found across the Americas, and then one group of clades that are only restricted to the Western the Arctic, always with the question in mind, how did our California species come here? Where did they come from? Are there overarching general similar patterns? And then finally, and this is where the field work part is really most important, um, we're also working on figuring out the hotspots of diversification of plant bugs in the California Florida province and the Western Arctic more broadly. And uh, for that, it is important to actually have a lot of ethanol material that generally results in slightly better genomes and gives us all the UCI loci we want to. 
And that is important because some of the methods we're going to be using to assess these diversification hotspots are very sensitive to branch length estimation. So it will be critical to actually have them as fresh as possible. So where are we at the moment? Well, we're sorting samples from previous year and new collections. And the way we're doing that is we're keeping track in a big spreadsheet that we call the MM spreadsheet. We now have about 4,000 lots um, kind of um, slotted into that spreadsheet. And when I'm saying we, it's really our three fabulous undergrad students who are just working so hard on that and they're treating the whole thing as a competition in a way that the rest of us really can't keep up with, um, providing preliminary IDs on some of these uh, taxa. And this is why I'm identifying the bottleneck down here, preliminary IDs. And the way we're doing things is really we're taking quick and dirty images uh, through the microscope with our cell phones, nothing fancy, just to so we can get an impression or, you know, some of the other people on the project, the grad students, myself, collaborators like Michael Schwartz and Toby can sit down, look over those and say, oh, this is this, this is that, forget about this one, not interesting. You may want to do a dissection of this particular specimen because that could be an interesting species. And that way we're sort of working our way through these samples that we have already collected, but also all the fresh material we're collecting at the moment. So also we've been setting aside specimens for um, CO1 barcoding and a min ion that's going to happen in house. And we have about 1400 specimens with emphasis on California set aside and plated for those uh, kind of approaches. Okay, what I'm really supposed to be talking about is new field work. So we've been trying to do about one trip a week, day and overnight trips, nine trips so far and counting, lots more planned. We're typically going where the vegetation is in bloom because that's where you get plant bugs. And our season started in March in low elevation, deserty areas. And we're now working our way north and up in elevation until late July when we're giving up and moving to other continents to do more field work. And we're feeling a lot of pressure this year because this has been the second year of an El Nino that has resulted in amazing plant growth of native plants all around. So we think this is our chance of collecting as many plant bugs around here as possible. So we're trying to do as much as we can. So um, you, I also should mention that this is California. It's pretty big, Central Valley, Sierras and everything. And so far, our collecting has really only focused on a tiny little section down in the south, where we've sampled um, some of the deserts around here, low elevation inland airs, but then also the coast. Those are collection localities so far, and we're trying to really emphasize this year areas that we don't typically go to for undergrad and grad student classes, and areas that we haven't really sampled over and over and over again over the last 17 years since I moved to Riverside. So we were lucky enough to have trips into the Chuckwalla Mountains, Santa Isabel Valley, Julian, which also has excellent pie, I should mention. And we spent quite a bit of time around the Salton Sea, which is really quite far down in California. But also for the first time in 17 years, I've actually uh, collected, we've collected on uh, Catalina Island, uh, which is also quite exciting. We have more plans tripped, uh, planned trips until the end of May. And then from there, we're gonna be, you know, kind of going further up north and into the Sierras, essentially. These are our field teams. So we typically try to take between two and four people maybe into the field. And there's some faces you may recognize, like for example, Michael Schwartz, who joined us for one field trip uh, during spring break, which was really quite amazing. Other than that, it's often Sarah and Veronica as the core grad students on a grant, as well as some of our fabulous undergrad students, uh, including Greedy, for example. So the way we're doing things is pretty standard. I want to say beating neck and stick. One thing we're doing differently from the way I was trained during my postdoc, which is I'm not using a proper big aspirator. I'm using these Herity style aspirators, which are a glass tube with a little uh, grid glued into them. And then a uh, cow filter, very important, and then a long tube. And you will actually kind of just suck a few mirrors into that uh, glass filter. You always have to keep your finger on top of it or you have to keep sucking. 
But the, the advantage of that is you can transfer your specimens very easily into relatively small vials. And that's what we're doing because we're sampling both ethanol and ethyl acetate vials. The, the little one here with the blue cap, that's um, ethanol and then ethyl acetate is a little bit bigger. And one thing we're also doing differently from what I was trained is we got confused a few too many times on host plants in the field. And now we actually take our Sharpie with us. That was Rochelle's extremely smart suggestion last year. And we will actually write whatever plant we think uh, we're collecting from on there because it is very important to keep track of field hosts. So then we're having these field notes where we consolidate um, what uh, collectors have, the different collectors on our trip have brought back to the car, very standard. The one thing that's not quite standard again is we're trying to take as many photos as possible of the hosts we're collecting on. And then over the years, PlantNet has become really a great resource for uh, identifying at least common plants around here. And since most of our bags are really common plants, I want to say in 80% of uh, the host plants, we do get pretty reliable identifications. And then there's always Andy Sanders in our herbarium at UCR who can provide us a helping hand where we get lost on plant identifications. So where are we right now? We have so far 31 localities, 122 field hosts, species of Meridi, big question mark, I have no idea. I sort of made up these numbers. I think we have about 100 non-duplicate breeding hosts and about 1.2 species of Meridi per host maybe, so maybe at least 120 different species, but realistically, I have no idea. What are the highlights? Well, those are the non-plant bug highlights. So a big rattlesnake in front of the dining hall in Santa Catalina Island, uh, the UC, uh, USC um, field station restated. That was not pleasant. Uh, but then also we get really cute uh, reptiles, including horned toads, for example. And on Catalina, we saw one of the 90 or so remaining bison out there as well, uh, which was really exciting. Okay, but back to the bugs. And I should warn you too, these images are not um, amazing, like uh, everything in one level plane images, because those are these quick and dirty sorting images that we do when we slot our new collections into these MM spreadsheets. So I was very excited. I know it's maybe not something super special for the married people on the screen, Semium subglaber, I was very excited about it because for many years, I always, when I saw Euphorbia polycarpa out in the desert, which is sort of a matty little plant, I would lift it up and see if I could find merits underneath it. And I never did. I always just found sitnets and ligerates and whatever. And I found it frustrating until this year where Semium subglaber was everywhere. Um, other cool finds were uh, um, Lopidia species, just because I think they're really amazingly pretty. Um, they're found on a variety of different plants, including Sorathamnus, Dahlia. This is out in the desert south of the Salton Sea. Um, of course, they have to be OOBs, as we call them, which stands for orange oak bugs, including a genus and species I described, Insula phyllus meridianus. And yes, it was described from Santa Catalina Island. Uh, we did collect those in pretty large numbers on Quercus pacifica, the so-called island scrub oak. That was very convenient. We collected an arboretum, so all the plants were labeled. Um, all plants out there should be labeled that way. It's fabulous. Then on a trip with uh, Dr. Michael Schwartz, we did um, beat and shake out these tequilia. Uh, Palmeri, and what came out of it was Pseudosalus tequilliae, which was described by Michael Schwartz in 2005, which I thought was way cool as well. Um, we found some, what we think is Sixianotus babier on Bebia, which was really quite cool, an unusual little equator sign, I want to say. I'm used to be collecting Halticotoma, which is found on yuccas, but I'd never seen Sixionodos in a field out here before, so that was quite exciting. And then I want to say the price so far, a species I so desperately wanted to collect records in the specimen database, not too many, from a different species of Tequilia. Uh, we went to the Coachella Valley Canal to a spot where there were 
um, uh, specimen records in the database, but also an iNaturalist observations of that really unique looking also tie-line, Bellella basicornis, and the first tequilia we shook had a gazillion of specimens on it. It was fabulous. It was really how field work should be, I want to say. And with that, I leave you with a beautiful view over the Anza Borrego um, State Park Desert.